When you're doing the electrical wiring in your house, there's three problems you really need to avoid to keep from burning down the house or actually dying. This is one of them right here. It's called arcing. As you can see, the electrical current is jumping between these two wires. That actually happens in homes every day. The reason for that is, let's say someone hangs a picture and they drive a nail into the wall and they hit the hot wire. That electricity is arcing across, jumping across, and it may hit actually the combustible products in your home, like the framing of your house. House catches on fire, you know that's going to be a major problem. We need to avoid that at all costs, and we've got a way to do that here in our project house. We also need to watch out for surge protection. Whether you're getting dirty power from the power plant or let's say your house gets hit by lightning, you've got to protect certain things. We've got a way to get rid of these surge protectors, but still protect all the wiring in your home. And last but not least is electrocution due to ground fault. That's whenever you might drop a hair dryer or let's say a radio into a bathtub or a sink. You can get electrocuted like that before the circuit breakers can kick off. We've got a way to avoid that problem as well. Let's go get started. You can usually find your breaker box out in the garage of your house. These are breakers inside the box itself and we don't have the cover panel on it. Without the panel on there you should not be reaching into a breaker box because you can get electrocuted. Once the panel's in place, we're okay. You can flip your breakers if you need to. Let me explain a little bit about what a breaker is and what it really does. This is a see-through version of one and it's a thermomagnetic breaker. Now the reason for it is the magnetic section takes care of any short circuits in your house and the thermal detects any problems with overloads. So let's say you're plugging too many plugs into a certain circuit in your house and it starts to heat up the wiring. It'll actually heat up the breaker and trip the breaker. The idea is if you have a short circuit or an overload problem, for this to shut off the power to the wires so you don't have a problem inside your house. It'll stop right here in the breaker box. You can come out and flip the breaker, see if it works. If it keeps popping off, you need to call an electrician to come check out what your problem is. Now that's great to have in your house, but it doesn't solve the other three problems we were talking about. One was ground fault. That's if you ever drop the hair dryer or the radio into something wet or you're out in the garage spraying with the hose, washing your cars, and you end up hitting something that has power. You need to shut off immediately. Now you've probably seen these type of outlets throughout the wet areas of your house, bathrooms, kitchens, and garages. It has a test button and a reset button. If you ever don't have power on any of the outlets in the garage or in your kitchen, just go flip the reset button, try it again, and see if it works. GE is now making a breaker that does the same thing. Instead of having one of these GFCI outlets in the wet area, you actually have this in your breaker box. It's a ground fault circuit interrupter breaker. As you can see, we've got three mounted here. And these are for the wet areas, again, of your house. In case you drop anything in the water or get water up against the electricity, it'll automatically shut off here instead of in the room itself. We also have a similar thing for surge suppressing. Like we talked about earlier, you probably got these around computers and stereo equipment. You don't have to have that anymore. GE's got a breaker system that actually fits in. The surge suppressor actually mounts right in your cabinet. These two green lights will come on when it's working. If you ever get a surge from lightning or the power company, it'll actually absorb the surge power right here instead of letting it run throughout your house and destroy all your electronics. Very inexpensive, you can get it right now. You don't have to build a new home. You can even retrofit it into an existing circuit breaker box. The black ones are our normal circuit breakers. These gray ones are our arc fault circuit interrupter. It looks fairly much like a standard circuit breaker, unless you take them side by side. You can see we've cut the top off this one. This is the arc fault circuit interrupter. This is a normal circuit breaker. This is mechanically controlled. This one has a computer board mounted inside it. You're always going to get little arcs in your house, normally when motors crank up in certain appliances and things. This can distinguish between an arc like that or an arc that's a real problem that can start a fire in your house. Now remember to concentrate on those three areas of your home when you're thinking about electricity. One, your ground fault circuit interrupters. Those are required by code. You need those in every wet area of your house. That includes kitchens, bathrooms, and don't forget the garage plus a surge suppressor. If you ever get hit by lightning or if you're just getting surges from the power company or from actual equipment inside your house, you need to protect those computers, television sets, and stereo systems. And don't forget your arc fault circuit interrupter to protect you and your loved ones from any little electrical accidents.